Good morning to all. Uh, we have successfully completed our trigonometry chapter. Hope that you are practicing well at home with the help of the video lessons. Today, we will quickly start with a new chapter in paper 2. That is tangents and secants to a circle. Ninth chapter in paper 2. Observe the board here. drawn few lines if you see these lines they are intersecting these two lines are intersecting at one point here there is no common point which is the intersecting point they are called the parallel lines here both the lines are coinciding with one another that means overlapping so these three lines you have studied in your Ninth class about the lines and angles in the chapter. I'll be drawing three figures. Keenly observe them. I've drawn a circle and a line here. Let's name it as PQ. Circle has a center O, the same line PQ. Third one, PQ line with the center O. Here, three figures are drawn. The three figures, when we see that, a line PQ with respect to the circle is not touching the circle or intersecting the circle. So, the line is called as a non-intersecting line with respect to the circle. When we observe the second figure, the line PQ is intersecting the circle at two distinct points, forming a chord AB. In the previous classes, lower classes, when you studied about the circles, we know the chord. So it's forming a chord AB and it is cutting the circle at the two distinct points. When we observe the third figure, we see that PQ is just touching the circle at one common point. So when we see all the three, there is some distinction between the three circles. Here, this is called a non-intersecting line. This line PQ, when it is touching the circle at two distinct points, is called the secant to the circle. This secant is intersecting the circle at two distinct points. Here, PQ is called as the tangent. It is just touching the circle at one point of contact. So, today's lesson is the tangents and secants to a circle. So, hope you understood what is a secant and what is a tangent? Let's take one circle, center O. What is this called? The radius. Okay. Let it be A. And if I draw a tangent, as we just know, what is a tangent? A tangent is a line just touching the circle at one point of contact. So this is the point of contact, A is the point of contact. I am drawing from an external point P. PA is the tangent. And OA is the radius of the circle. So there is a lemma in tangents and secants. A lemma is nothing but a proven statement. It is already proved. So according to the lemma, the radius of a circle is always perpendicular to the tangent. That means the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent. The lemma is not complete yet because just the radius is perpendicular does not mean any sense. If I take any other radius here, you can draw the innumerable radius for a circle. So if this is another radius, is this radius perpendicular to the tangent? No. 
So the lemma tells that the radius is perpendicular tangent at the point of contact. The point of contact should be common for both the tangent as well as the radius. So in this case OA is perpendicular to PA. This is the proven lemma. The proven statement is nothing but a lemma. Using this we will we will look upon some few of the bits, very useful and important bits for your examination. Uh, in 9.1 in a textbook, a tangent to a circle intersects it in dash points. A tangent to a circle intersects in only one point. One is the blank to be filled. Uh, a line intersecting a circle in two points is called as, just we have told, a line intersecting the circle in two points is called as a secant. A circle can have dash parallel tangents at the most. See, at the most, if you draw parallel tangents, this is one pair of parallel tangent. And another parallel tangent I can draw here. It's not cutting, just touching. So, at the most, we can draw only two pairs. So, two is the answer. The common point of a tangent to a circle and the circle is called dash. It is called as the point of contact. This point of contact is very important in case of the lemma also. So the blank is point of contact. We can draw dash tangents to a circle. See how many tangents can we draw to a circle? Innumerable. That means infinite tangents. Keep on going on drawing these tangents. So infinite is the infinite number of tangents can be drawn to a circle. These are the important bits where are quite uh, uh, repetitive in your examinations. Let's see one problem in the same exercise. This is a problem in the exercise. Calculate the length of the tangent from a point 15 centimeters away from the center of a circle of radii, radius 9 centimeters. So we will solve this problem. We have to find the length of the tangent. So let us draw the circle with center O. I will draw the radii. Radius given as 9 centimeters. Okay. Let us name this as A. And we will draw a tangent here. And the point is how many centimeters away? 15 centimeters away. Let the point be P. This is 15 centimeters away from the center of the circle with radius 9 centimeters. So PA is the tangent here. We have to find the length of the tangent. We have to find this PA. So, we know according to the lemma that the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact. So, we can write here as OA is perpendicular to PA. OA is the radius, PA is the tangent. Here, if you look at this triangle, this is a right angle triangle. Opposite to the right angle is the hypotenuse. Given hypotenuse is 15 centimeters, this is the base of the Triangle 9 centimeters and we need to find the other side. So according to the Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem. In the right angle. Hypotenuse square is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So hypotenuse square equal to side square plus side square. So in any right angle. As I have told you in a previous class, if two sides of a uh, triangle is given, the other side we can easily find out through the um, Pythagoras theorem. The hypotenuse given is 15 centimeters. One side is 9, hypotenuse square. 9 centimeters whole square. And we need to find the other one that is the PA. PA side is nothing but the tangent, the length of our tangent. So 15 square equals 225, 9 square, 81 plus PA square. We'll send this 81 here. 225 minus 81 plus PA square. So, PA square is equal to 144. So, PA is the square root of 144 equals 12 centimeters. So, the length of the tangent is, therefore, the length of 
tangent you could easily find out by the lemma and the Pythagoras examination for two marks all depending on the length of the tangent all the problems so this is one problem in your exercise let's see we'll see one theorem the lengths of the tangents drawn from the external point to a circle are equal. So, what does this theorem tell? The lengths of a tangent from an external point. Let this point be some P. We will draw two tangents from an external point. Let this be the center O. The lengths of the tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are always equal. Let the point of contact be A here and this be B. We need to prove that the length of PA and PB are always equal. This is an important uh, uh, theorem. Here given is, given is a circle with center O, a point lying outside the circle. And when we draw two uh, tangents P and P, uh, PB, uh, it forms a, uh, we have to prove that PA is equal to PB. That is, that is a given. Given is nothing but what is given in the theorem and circle with center O. And, and PA and PB tangents. This is simply given in the theorem. What we need to prove? That is RDP required to prove. We need to prove that the lengths of the tangents are equal. That means PA here should be equal to PB that we need to prove. So we will start our proof. We will make one construction that is I join the line OA and OB. Also from the center, I'll join OP. Join OA, OB and OP. I've made this construction. So I've written the dotted lines. Now, according to the lemma, we know that the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent. At this point of contact, so OA is perpendicular to PA and OB is perpendicular to PB from the lemma. And if you see, there are two triangles formed in this triangle OAP and triangle O. B, P. Let us see these two triangles. In these two triangles, one is here it is 90 degrees, here it is 90 degrees. Both the triangles are right angle triangles. So, angle O, A, P, angle O, A, P is equal to angle O, B, P that is equal to 90 degrees. These two are 90 degrees that I have mentioned here. And one more thing, that means this is the right angle, isn't it? And in these two triangles, one common side is there, that is OP. OP is the common side, as well as it is the hypotenuse for both the right angles. See, opposite to the right angle is the hypotenuse, opposite to the right angle is hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is common here. Common hypotenuse. And we also know that these two are equal. Why? Because the radius are always equal. Radii equal. That means OA is equal to OB. Here we will see one angle that is right angle, one side that is the hypotenuse and another side. Both three are equal. So we can draw a conclusion from this that According to the RHS congruency axiom, what is RHS congruency axiom? Right, right angle, hypotenuse, sine. 
So one right, right angle, hypotenuse and side is three are equal. According to the RHS congruency axiom, we can clearly state that both the triangles are congruent to one other. Triangle OAP is congruent to triangle OBP. These two are congruent. And uh, seeing the congruency, we can easily tell that the sides, the corresponding sides, that is PA is equal to PB. Hence, proved. Why PA is equal to PB? Here, this is one of the side of the triangle. This is one of the side of the other triangle. I have proved according to the RHS congruency that these two triangles are congruent to one another. So, the corresponding parts, the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are equal. When, we, when I tell that these two are uh, congruent to each other, the corresponding parts means we can uh, uh, we can equate the uh, sides, we can equate the angles, anything which we want. So, the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are equal. According to that, PA is equal to PB. Now, what are PA and PB? According to this, P and PB are the lengths of the tangents drawn from an external point to the same circle. So, hence we have proved that the length of the tangents from an external point are always equal. This is a very important theorem. If AP and AQ are two tangents to a circle with center O, so that the angle POA, POA is 110 degrees, then find the angle PAQ. That means we need to find this angle. This is a problem in your exercise. You need to find this angle. Here, PA and, uh, uh, PA and AQ are the tangents drawn from the external part A. So, if you see this, there is a quadrilateral formed. Here, this is 110 degrees given. And this angle is right angle. Because... The radii is perpendicular to the tangent. Radii is perpendicular to the tangent. So, we see the quadrilateral. Solution. Quadrilateral OPAQ. This is a quadrilateral. See, the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is always equal to 360 degrees. Here, one given angle is 110 degrees. We know according to the lemma, these two are 90 degrees. So, we will sum up all the four angles. 110 degrees given plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the angle PAQ. Sum up to 360 degrees. So, let me calculate these 110 plus 90. 200 and 290. 290 degrees plus angle PAQ equal to 360 degrees. So angle PAQ is equal to 360 degrees minus 290 degrees. That means how much is angle? Angle PAQ is 70 degrees. So given 110 degrees we have to find this angle. So that is 90 degrees. This is one problem in your textbook. With this, we can we complete the two exercises of your uh, tangents and secants. Hope you understood the concept and I, I hope that as we are all at the home, you practice the sums thoroughly. Revise the concept, practice the sums thoroughly. Let's join tomorrow with a new concept. Thank you all.